Yale is one of the leading choices for locks and security solutions having been a trusted brand for a long time now. So it's no surprise that Yale is continuing with its smart home and home kit integrations with its product. Although the Yale Linus is not the company's first smart lock, it's Yale's first home kit enabled smart lock. Yale sent me over the Yale Linus smart lock along with the keypad, Yale Connect Up and the adjustable cylinder. I've had it installed in my own for just over five months now to complete this review. So if you want to find out about my experience with the install setup, the Yale Access app, HomeKit control and automations, then continue to watch this video to find out how it's performed. Now, before we get started, if you're not a subscriber, then hit the subscribe button and also the bell button. Also, if this video helps you out and you think about buying one of these, then check out the links in the description below that help this channel out at no extra cost to you. And finally, if you've got any questions or any comments or anything that's not answered in this video, leave it in the comment section below and I will try and get back to you. So first of all, starting with the design, the Yale Linus is a well-made smart lock and it's made of metal and it feels really solid, but it's certainly not the smallest of smart locks. On the front of the lock, you find a fun turn, which allows you to lock and unlock the door manually. You also find the battery compartment, which around the back of this as the setup codes for the Yale app and HomeKit. The rear of the lock also features the bar slot along with a reset button. Yale has designed the Linus smart lock to work with Euro type cylinders. You need to have a door that has a lock slot on the inside and for it to be operated from the outside when a key is inserted on the inside. However, if your lock does not meet these specifications like mine didn't, then Yale sells a Linus adjustable cylinder. This cylinder kit comes with extensions to adjust the size along with the ability to allow it to be operated from the outside when a key is in. Now moving on to setup. Yale doesn't provide any installation instructions in the box. Instead, the install process is all driven via the Yale app. So you'll first need to scan the QR code that is printed on the battery compartment cover. As previously mentioned, Yale also provided me with the Yale adjustable cylinder. And at first sight, this would seem difficult to install. However, it's simple and just involves putting the thing together to match the size of your door frame. And then I remove one screw from my existing lock and slid the Yale adjustable cylinder into place. Next is the metal back plate, which has a 3M backing to hold it in place. This involves placing it over the cylinder and fixing it in place with some small screws around the cylinder. The Yale adjustable cylinder also has two screws to fix the back plate in place. And then once it's all installed, all you need to do is unlock the wings on the Yale Linus, insert the turn rod and fit the back plate and close the wings. Then it's all set up. So once the Linus is physically installed, you then need to set up the smart lock within the app. At the start of the setup process, you'll be asked some questions about how you would lock your door. And if like me, you have a door that requires you to lift the handle when locking the door, then it's important that this question is correctly answered. So the calibration process is correct and the auto lock feature is disabled, which is important with multi-point locked doors. Once you've answered a few setup questions, the setup process takes you through cal calibrating the lock, which involves setting the manual lock control thumb to various locking and unlock points. If you want to know the state of your door lock, whether it's closed, left ajar or open, then you need to install the Yale door send sensor. This is a simple metal tag that you position in line with the Yale Linus during install and you'll be asked if this is installed and it'll take you through some additional steps. This sensor, I want to point out, is not exposed to HomeKit. It just works within the Yale app. Once you have everything set up in the Yale app, you can then set up in HomeKit. This is exactly the same as adding any other HomeKit device. However, you cannot use the Yale Linus in HomeKit without first setting up the lock within the Yale app. This is because of the calibration required and it's not something that HomeKit caters for. While it may seem a little daunting installing a smart lock, including changing the lock cylinder from start to finish, it took me just under 45 minutes. And this is a real benefit when setting anything like this up. So hopefully that'll be encouraging to show people that this is a very simple lock to install if you just follow the instructions and take your time. So moving on to actually using the Yale Linus. When using the Yale Linus smart lock, you have various ways to operate it. You can use the Yale app, the Ohm app, the optional keypad, manual turn knob, or using a traditional key. However, I want to call out front that using either the Yale app or the Ohm app, I found it's cumbersome for simply unlocking unlocking the door. This is not a reflection of the Yale Linus in any way, as it's going to be the same with any smart lock in my opinion. This is because I found it quicker to get the physical key out and unlock the door rather than finding your phone, unlocking your phone, finding the app, waiting for it to load and unlocking the door. I just found it a lot easier to use the key. However, it is when it's used with automations within the Yale app or HomeKit 
that a smart lock like the year Linus adds value to any home and I found it added value to my home but with one exception the Yale Apple Watch app which I'll talk about later in the video but before we jump into the smart side of things let me just touch on the manual options for interacting with the Yale Linus on the inside you can unlock and unlock the door using the turn thumb and you can also operate the lock with a traditional key and this is useful for homes that have got people that have not fully onboarded to smart tech just yet or if it it happens to stop operating. When the door is unlocked, either via the app, automations or keypad, the turn thumb will rotate and it will emit a green swirling LED and when finished, an audible beep. Then in reverse, when the door is locked, the LED will be red and again, a audible beep will sound. If the Yearliners cannot lock the door for whatever reason because you've not raised the handle or something is stopping it from doing it, then it'll give you an audio alert that is different to let you know the Yale Linus has run into a problem and you need to correct it. So let's now talk about some of the smart side of things and starting with the Yale app. On the first tab, this is where you can see the state of the lock. It will show you if it's unlocked with a green circle icon and if locked with a red circle. This screen also shows you if the door is closed or open if you've installed the door sense tab. Tapping the icon will either unlock or lock the door depending on the current state of the Yale Linus. The next tab is an activity record of all the actions from the Yale Linus. This could be if the door has been opened or closed, who unlocked it, it even shows you if this action was requested by OwnKit or the keypad. This feature could be used in a variety of situations. For instance, to see when children are arrived home, you could also use it in an Airbnb property to see when guests have arrived and keep tabs on comings and goings. So I could see how this could be useful. The third tab is where you grant access to the Yale line of smart lock. You can send invites to users, which is controlled by two-factor authentication via SMS. And depending if you have a keypad in place, each user can have their own unique pin code. So you can provide access just for personal entry using a code, which is again useful for someone working in your home, or full access for family members to the Yale app. The Yale tab gives you access to settings for any connected devices. For the Yale Linus, the settings have the auto unlock and lock settings, door ajar timings, and all those great things. Now moving on to automations, and let's start with the Yale app. As I've already mentioned, using the Yale app to operate the Linus smart lock is not how you get the most out of it. It's when you're using the automation features like auto lock and unlock that you really do get the benefit. The app uses geolocation so you can have your door unlock once you get within range of your home. And the auto lock feature also operates when you are within about 200 meters from your home. This is like how to do works with the heating controls. Then when you're within a few feet of your door, and I suspect it's when it's within Bluetooth range, then the door will then unlock for you. This method I also like because it prevents accidental locking if you're driving past your home, but didn't actually go home and onto your drive, for instance. Unfortunately, I could not test the auto lock feature in the Yale app due to it having a lift door handle on my door. But overall, I was impressed with how the automations work. And again, I would stress, this is where you're gonna get the most benefit out of this particular smart lock. And I think any smart lock. Although the Yale app for iPhone was not my go-to option for opening the door with the Yale Linus, the app for Apple Watch, which can be placed on the Apple Watch face, was a lot more useful. With just two taps, I can unlock my front door when pulling up on my drive, and when I'm leaving, I also could lock the door. So using the Yale app on the Apple Watch made me think about automations versus using the app on the Apple Watch. Ultimately though, I went with automations, as not everyone in the house has an Apple Watch, whereas everyone does have an iPhone. Now, as I mentioned, you can also use it with the Yale keypad, and during this review, I've been using it with the keypad, and I found it's useful in my home for handing out key codes to visitors. You can create user codes in the Yale app between four and six digits length, and you can create up to 256 codes. So you need to have a very busy house to exhaust this. Uh, when using it myself, I found there was about a two second delay, and this was between inputting the key in the keypad and then sending the command to the Yale Linus. Also has a handy backlight to help when entering digits at night, and the backlight is activated when you press the Yale button on the keypad. It would have been nice if it was some sort of motion sensor detects someone stood in front of it to automatically turn it on. So let's just touch on the Yale Connect. While the Yale Linus does not need a hub to connect to HomeKit, you can introduce the Yale Connect hub to your setup to get remote access via the Yale app. So let me be clear on this. 
If you've got a Apple TV, HomePod, or a iPad acting as a HomeKit hub, then you can still get remote access for HomeKit. However, if you want to get remote access to the Yale app, say for instance, you want to allocate a keypad code to somebody and you're outside your home, without the Connect, you can't do that. So this will be useful for Airbnb situations, for instance, when you want to operate things remotely. But other than that, you don't get any additional benefits when using it within the HomeKit environment. It's also worth pointing out you can only connect one device to Yale Connect. So if you have more than one Yale Linus or other Yale smart home devices, then you need multiple Yale Connects in your home. Now I've spoken to Yale about this and they have said they're working on a future hub that will allow more than one connection. Now moving on to connectivity. The Yale Linus connects over Bluetooth to your device. So if you're within range, with your iPhone, then it will connect directly. However, if you're outside of your home, then it will connect via your HomeKit hub if you've got one. I found that operating the Yale Linus via the Yale app or Ohm app has a delay of around about two seconds between opening the app and it become ready to use. And this was the same when using the Yale Connect Hub. When I asked Yale about thread support, I was told that Yale Linus does not have the hardware inside. However, they're looking at thread support for future products which I find promising. Now moving on to the battery performance. The Yale Linus Smart Lock is powered by four AA batteries, which are included in the box. Yale says that the Yale Smart Lock will last about six months. And when it runs low on juice, you'll get a notification via the app. While I cannot confirm the six months claim via Yale, I've had the Yale Linus installed on my door for over five months now and it's still running strong this is with daily use with the door locked and locked multiple times and the tracking of the door open and closed and over the last couple of months using it a lot more to get a lot more insight into this review now let's look at homekit support when using the OMAP to control the Linus, you can unlock and unlock door using the control tile. As with the Yale app, this is not, in my opinion, the best way to control the Yale Linus for everyday use. But if I was out of the home and someone needed to gain access and didn't have a key code or any other way to access the house, then I could allow access via the OMAP, which was easy to do. But like with the Yale app and automations, it's when you bring HomeKit automations into play that I got the most out of HomeKit control. This is because I created an automation to unlock the Yale Linus when I left and lock when I came home. But unlike the Yale version of this feature, you need to confirm it via the iPhone or Apple Watch. And I found this was fine if I was leaving the house and it popped up on my Apple Watch, I simply pressed run automation. Using Siri Voice Assistant to control the Yale Linus works well too. You can use commands like, hey, unlock the front door, or hey, is the front door locked? Both commands were expected and gave me a response time pretty quickly. So my review summary. Overall, my experience with the Yale Linus has been positive. The build quality of the Linus is superb and it feels really well built, which is what I was expecting from one of the leading lock makers. Yes, it is a big design when it's fitted, but I found it did blend in well overall. Although I did get some questions from visitors asking what it actually was. I also liked how easy it was to install, even when I included the Yale Linus adjustable cylinder into the mix. In fact, I felt adding the Yale Linus cylinder helped with the install and increased the effectiveness of the fixing because of the two screws that you used to install. As mentioned in the review, I didn't feel I got an awful lot out of either apps when just using it to unlock or lock the door for entering the home, which I found would be the case for most people, but I think it all depends on people's situations. However, it's when using automations that Yale Linus, like any other door lock in my opinion, is useful in HomeKit setup. And then being able to set the smart lock to auto lets you set and just forget. I also like you can add accessories like the keypad and this will be useful again as I've already mentioned for Air and B type sit setups. I also like the ability to track lock activity of coming and goings and the fact this is so detailed down to user level how the lock has been unlocked and whether home kit has been involved. Now using Bluetooth for this lock I think it lets it down a little. The delay is noticeable and this is the same if using the keypad or the app to operate the Yale Linus. Plus adding Yale Keck does not offer any improvements for this so it would be nice if Yale add included thread support which is perfect for this type of device given it's battery operated will help the battery last longer but improve connection now my final thoughts the bottom line the Yale Linus is a solid well-made smart lock and when used with automations either in the OMAP or the Yale app it works well plus you can use a traditional key or manual turn knob for those in the house that are not fully on board with smart home tech yet so that's a wrap of this review Hopefully you found it useful and if you have, then give me a thumbs up as it is greatly appreciated. 
Also, if you've got a question or a comment that's not been answered, leave it in the comment section below. And if I know the answer, I will get back to you. And also, if you think about buying one of these, there's some links in the description below that help this channel out at no extra cost to you. And finally, if you're not a subscriber, you're still at this point in the video. Thank you very much for watching this far. And don't forget to subscribe for more HomeKit videos that are coming out over the next couple of weeks. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.